Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite techniques, which is layering dye ink and combining it with pattern stamping. These are the Waffle Flower products I'll be using today. First up is the Arrowhead stamp set. I'm going to use this stamp set to stamp my patterns. I love this set. There's really endless possibilities with it, and I just really love creating patterns. I'll also use the Moon and Star stamp set to create my sentiment. And I will be using the mini arrow die and the tiny painted heart, which you see here, to create a dimensional element. To cut a perfect sentiment strip, I'm using the sentiments die. And to add a stitched border to my panels, I'm using the A2 Nesting Rectangles 1 die set. I'm going to start by stamping my panels. I have two A2 panels here, so they are four and a quarter by five and a half. I have the arrowhead stamp set. I'm going to go ahead and pull off the largest stamp from that set, and then I will mount it on a long acrylic block. I'm going to use the grids here on my work surface to make sure I get my stamp nice and straight. This will just help to make sure that my pattern is nice and even. I'm using seven waffle flower dye inks to create basically a rainbow. The center color is my fourth color, which is this chirp chirp, this green color. And I'm going to start with this center color and work out. The first thing I'm going to do though is mark the center, so that is two and three fourths. I'm going to just make the tiniest little pencil mark here, very light, because I am going to stamp right over it and I don't want it to be visible because you can't sometimes you can't erase once you stamp over pencil because the ink will trap that lead. I'm starting with that chirp chirp. I'm going to ink up the stamp and then I will center the stamp over that center mark that I made and then I will stamp it down. You don't have to be super worried about getting it perfectly centered because you can even things out when we layer our next colors. Now I'll just clean off the stamp with a chamois and I'll move on to my next color. So now the next color after the green is this kind of aqua color. This is called New Fish and Pond. I inked up the exact same stamp I used just a second ago and I'm now overlapping it a little bit over the green. This will ensure that there's no white spots, but also ensure that we get a, by overlapping these two colors, we're going to get a new third color. See how it's a little darker there where the blue overlapped the green? It's just really, this is the fa my favorite part about layering these inks. I just love the new colors you create when you layer one over the other. It's just, it really adds a lot more depth. So now I finished the top half of my rainbow. I'm now working on the bottom half. So I just did a yellow, which is you said what. The orange is oh happy day, and I'm finishing up with the red, which is my pleasure. So I have a couple areas here on my pattern where I didn't press hard enough, and you the coverage isn't even with the ink. So I'm going to kind of try to fix this with a round brush. I just dipped it in the same color ink on the ink pad, kind of tap the excess off on the lid and now I'm just pouncing with my paintbrush this ink over that little um, bare area where I just didn't press the stamp firm enough. Um, this is mainly because I decided to use an acrylic block. Of course if I used a Misty I could have simply stamped it again but um, I find that stamping a pattern where I'm stamping using the same stamp but slightly sliding it down each time, it's a little bit easier for me to do on an acrylic block. So that's why I chose to use an acrylic block today and not the Misty. But of course you could definitely do this on the Misty as well. So I'm just touching up these couple of areas here where I just didn't press firm enough and then I will move on to my next panel. But first I'll hold up to the camera so you can take a look at that pattern. So I'm starting with an A2 panel again. I have the arrowhead stamp set as well and my four uh, waffle flower dye ink colors. I'm actually going to basically stamp this stamp like I did before. So I have like seven stripes, but I'm repeating the orange, red, and purple on the other side of the yellow and that's going to what create my seven. The Yellow is going to be my center color, so I'm going to ink up my first stamp in the yellow, which is You Said What. I've actually already made little pencil marks for the center, and I'm making sure the top of that uh, stamp is right 
at the center line. Now I will ink it up again in the yellow, flip it around, and then stamp it again, but flip this time to kind of complete that pattern. Now I'm moving on to the stamp we used for the last pattern, lining it up on using my grid again to make sure it's nice and straight. The next color I'm going to use is the orange, which is Oh Happy Day. So I'm inking up the stamp here. Then again, then I will stamp it, making sure I overlap a little bit of the yellow, just like I did for the last pattern. And I will flip the panel around and stamp the other side. Moving on to my next color, which is a red which is my pleasure, stamped both sides, and then I'll complete this pattern with the purple, which is happy-go-lucky. I think the reason I like pattern stamping so much is I really like playing with color. I like to try different color combinations, and I just find that pattern stamping just allows you to play with color so easily. So I have my two backgrounds done, now I'm ready to move on to die cut. The first thing I'm going to do is take the largest die from the A two nesting rectangles one die set and line it up here with the panels and then I will run it through my die cutting machine. This is going to add a stitched border to these panels. It's just a nice little detail, I think a nice finishing touch. So I'm just lining it up since the panel and the die are exact same size. I'm lining them up perfectly then using a piece of micro pore tape or a couple pieces of micro pore tape to hold that die in place and then put the top plate on on and run it through my die cutting machine. I'll remove the tape here and then I will pop the panel out of the die and then I'll hold it to the camera so you can see that beautiful stitched border that the die adds. It's just a nice little detail and I really like use, doing this on my panels. I'm going to repeat the same process here for the second panel, lining the panel up with the die, using the tape to hold it in place, and then running it through my die cut machine. And once again, holding it up to the camera so you can see the stitched edge. Now I have some black cardstock and some white cardstock. I already have the mini arrow and tiny heart on the white, and I use the largest sentiments die and cut it out of black. And now I'm just popping out the die cuts with the die pick. The heart and the arrow are going to actually make a dimensional element for my card. So I'm going to cut the heart and the arrow again but this time out of craft foam. I'm using my cuddle bug to do this because I found my cuddle bug cuts my, my craft foam the best. It just doesn't smush it as much. And now I'm ready to adhere the cardstock heart and arrow to the craft foam heart and arrow. But the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the center section of the arrow because I'm, I'm going to have the arrow over the heart. And so I don't need craft foam right there in the center. If in fact, it will be in the way. And I'm now that I've snipped it, I'm ready to put the two together. So I'm using Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Adhesive here to put the craft foam, adhere it to the back of the cardstock. And now I will do the same thing for the heart. And once I have the heart together, I'll pop out that inside piece of the heart because I don't need that and then I will glue the arrow down onto the heart using some more Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Adhesive. And this just creates a nice three-dimensional element for our card. Hold up the camera here so you can see it. Really pretty. I love how the uh, arrow and the heart go together so well. I'm now moving on to creating my sentiments for my card. I'm using the Moon and Star stamp set my first sentiment, I'm going to actually combine two sentiments. I'm using the you are my, and I'm going to cut out this word everything from this sentiment to make a sentiment that says you are my everything. I have the sentiments die negative sheet here, and I also have the little sentiment strip up at the top. I'm going to center my sentiment inside that negative opening on my um, scrap piece here. Then I'll pop in my sentiment strip. Then I will grab some anti-static powder because I'm going to do some heat embossing. Ink up my sentiment in Versamark ink. And then I will stamp it. Then carefully pick up the sentiment strip and pour on the white embossing powder. I'll just tap off the excess and then I'll move to my preheated heat gun. 
because this is a spindly little strip here, I heat up half and set it, and then I flip it around and heat the other half. That's how I make sure I don't burn my fingers. Now for my second panel, I'm just using a sentiment straight out of the Moon and Star stamp set, and then I'm going to kind of um, embellish or decorate around the sentiment with some of the stars and the moon from the Moon and Star stamp set. And once I've got them arranged the way I want them, I'm going to fold my Misty over and pick them up. I'm going to ink up the sentiment and all the moon and stars with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This happens to be my favorite black ink, but you actually can use whatever black ink you have. I usually just have to stamp it with one go with the VersaFine, that's why I love using it. I'm going to heat set it here just because it is a pigment ink and I want to start to color right on top of it, so pigment inks usually stay wet a little bit longer, so I just set that ink with my heat gun and now I'm going over the stars and the moon with a, my Winka Stella pen. This is just going to add a tiny bit of sparkle and shine, a little bit more interest to this card. It's a very simple card design and this little detail will really uh, amp it up a little bit. And you can kind of see in the light here how that little shimmer is really pretty. Now I'm ready to kind of put everything together. So I have an A2 top folding card base here. I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of my panel and just glue my first panel straight down onto my card base. Hold the panel in place just till the glue sets a little bit. And then I'll move on to gluing my dimensional element. I'm just using some more liquid glue to stick that down. And then I have some foam tape on the back of my sentiment. I'll just remove the backing and center it and place it right underneath that heart and arrow. Really simple design but very pretty. I really like how I have the background being the, sh the star of that card. So for this one I want to add just a little bit more interest. So I have a piece of black and white twine. I'm going to tie it around the left side of the card. So it's I'll make a little bow at the upper portion and then I'm going to just glue this straight down onto the card base. The string is actually fairly thin or the twine is pretty thin so it doesn't even really create a bump and also this cardstock is very thick. It's a 110 pound white cardstock so that also helps to make sure that even though I have that little bit of thickness from the twine, the cardstock, the cardstock is so strong that it doesn't kind of buckle underneath it. And again, use some more liquid glue to hold it in place. So I just noticed I had a little bit of overhang or underhang from the card base. So I just took a pair of scissors, tucked it under the front panel and trimmed off that little bit of excess. And that will complete both of my cards. I'll hold each one up to the camera here so you can see the beautiful pattern that we stamped and I just love how layering that dye ink creates different colors, new colors. It's just a really cool way to, and simple way to add some more depth and interest to your cards. And here's the second card we created. Fewer colors but still very pretty and a different pattern and I really only used two stamps from the Arrowhead stamp set to create these patterns. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit waffleflower.com and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching.